In this video, I'm going to be reviewing one of my favourite apps, it's Darkroom on the iPad. Hello and welcome, my name's Andrew Goodman and I do creative artwork on the iPad. And I'm just going to say straight away, if you're looking for an app to do photo editing on the iPad, a bit of colour grading, organising your photos, Darkroom is the app for you. If you're familiar with my channel, you know that I love Affinity Photo. If you don't know what Affinity Photo is, it's just like Photoshop, only better, or at least certainly on the iPad, it's better. On the desktop, Photoshop's brilliant, but on the iPad, it's not as good and and that's where Affinity Photo shines. When I'm finished doing my work in Affinity Photo, I always color grade it in Darkroom. I always export it into Darkroom and that's when I put my finishing touches and color correction and cropping and things like that in Darkroom. Darkroom is absolutely amazing and it's so, so powerful. And in this video, I'm going to tell you what I think of it, my review of it, and more importantly, whether you should get it or not. So let's get into it. If you haven't heard of Darkroom or if you're not sure what Darkroom is, chances are you've heard of Adobe Lightroom. Adobe Lightroom is brilliant. I've been using it for many, many years on the desktop here and also I've been using it on the iPad. And I have to say, if I'm not too impressed with Photoshop on the iPad, I can't say that about Lightroom, but we're not here to talk about Lightroom. We're here to talk about Darkroom. I use Darkroom as my go-to photo editing app on the iPad. And that's for several reasons. There's just something fun about it. And I know that sounds daft, but when you're using it as much as I do, you want to use something which is fun. And Darkroom is that when you bring a photo into Darkroom, there's just something so natural about playing about the sliders, playing about with the colors, trying to get the photo the way you want it to look. And there's just something really fun about it. And it's easy to use. It's so good, in fact, that in 2020, it got an award from Apple, Apple Design Award. And I can completely understand why, because when you open up the app, there's just something very intuitive about it. You play with the sliders, it's easy. You don't really need a tutorial. In videos to come, I will make a few tutorials in Darkroom. It's fun and it's easy to use. It's a great design. But just because it's easy to use, just because it looks great, doesn't make it a great app. It's powerful. It's a really, really powerful app for editing your photos. It can edit JPEGs, it can edit raw photos. Any file format I've been able to throw at it, it's been able to edit it, no problem at all. As soon as you download the app for the first time, as soon as you open it up, all your photos are there. All the photos that are on your camera roll are automatically included in the app. They're just magically transported into the app. So you don't need to import anything from your camera roll, from your photos app. It just automatically appears in the app. And that's brilliant if you're working in another package, whether it be a Findy photo or another app, and you export your JPEG into the camera roll app, the photo or image will automatically appear in Darkroom. And that's brilliant. I know that's a really small thing, but it's a big thing too. It's one less step from having to go to import, look for your photo and import it in. It's automatically in Darkroom. And just for easy use purposes, just for losing that extra step, it's really, really handy. And again, not to compare it to Adobe Lightroom, which we will be doing in another video, hopefully. Adobe Lightroom, you have to do that. Every photo you want to edit in Adobe Lightroom, you have to import it in. That's not the case in Darkroom. It's brilliant. And it's just a wee time saver, but it's something you get used to and you appreciate. And after a while, you don't even think about it. Managing your photos in Darkroom is really, really easy. It's really, really good. You can make albums. You can import photos into it. It's so easy to make a new album, select multiple photos and bring them into that album. And you can have different albums for different projects. And it just makes life so much easier. Another great feature of Darkroom is the ability to flag and reject some photos. From time to time, I do creative posters, creative artwork with my family, and I take lots of photos of my kids in different scenarios, doing different poses. And when I'm trying to choose which photo I should choose over another one, Darkroom is how I do that. I look at the photos, you can have split views, so you can have two photos side by side, and you can quickly reject photos, you can flag photos up, and it's a brilliant way of culling your photos and getting it down to the best view, or the best one. Brilliant feature. Not only is Darkroom for photos, it's also for videos. You can color grade your videos in Darkroom. It does a brilliant, brilliant job of it. But full disclosure, it's something I've hardly ever used. I used it a little when I first got the app. It's not something I use when I'm editing my YouTube channel and family projects and work projects and all the other video projects I have. It's not part of my workflow. I've talked a lot about editing photos. Now let's have a look in Darkroom how you go about doing that. Here is a recent photo of a project I did with Affinity Photo. It's my son on his first day of school and also his last day of school. These two photos was taken seven years apart. I combined them with a Finley photo and as always, I would then bring it into Darkroom and edit it. So let's do that now. You can crop this photo, you can crop it. And, and this is what I love 
love, love about the iPad. You can use your finger, you can use your Apple Pencil and get in there and just easily move the borders. There's different aspect ratios, there's grids, there's tons of options of how you want to crop this photo or you can simply reset it. The next icon down is all to do with presets. Some look better than others depending on what project you like. And the great thing about it, you can click into it and then bring down the strength. So if you just want a little of that preset, you can adjust it. On down, that's when we can go into our adjustments. And this is where I spend most of my time in darkroom, changing the brightness or contrast, changing the shadows, the white levels, the black levels, the saturation. In another video coming up, I'm gonna go through my process and how I edit photos. So we'll come up to this plus icon. You can actually do masks in darkroom. Now this is a fairly new. Well, when I say fairly new, I think it's been out maybe over a year now. When I first got Darkroom, this wasn't a feature. I got Darkroom two years ago, but now you can add masks. This here is really powerful. You can even get subjects. And if I click on this, look at that. If by magic I selected my son, old version, young version of him. It's like witchcraft. It's witchcraft the way Darkroom does it. That's the only way I can explain it. And then I can do lots of, of changes just on the subject. I can tick that and go into it and I can do it again and make more changes to it. Next icon down is curves where we can change the curves. The next one down is color. And this is something when it comes to YouTube thumbnails, I spend a lot of time changing certain colors and this is how I do it. And then color grade. And this is another fairly new, more recent than the masks. And that's the other great thing about Darkroom. They keep on making changes. They're not happy just to sit and say, we've done a great app and we'll move on to something else. Updates keep coming out for Darkroom. And this is a powerful one where you can do some color grading. And then the icon at the top here, here, that's where you export your photos. You can export it in a number of different file formats and you can even export it with a watermark. And you might be thinking now, Andrew, how much does this app cost? And although you can download it for free and you can edit your photos and you can play about with Darkroom, you can't export any photos on the free version, you have to pay for it. And that's what they call Darkroom Plus. So you can download the app, you can play about with it, you can see if you like it. And that's a brilliant thing about Darkroom. You don't have to pay for it or sign up to a subscription. You can play about with it. And then if you think you're happy with it, if you want to take the plunge, you can sign up. When it comes to Darkroom Plus, you have three options. The first is monthly subscription. For $9.99, you can subscribe to Darkroom Plus, which is quite expensive for a monthly cost. Choice number two, it's yearly subscription for $32.99. You can subscribe to Darkroom for the year and that works out as $2.75 per month. So it's much, much better value getting the yearly subscription. But once I played about with Darkroom, I went for option number three and I just went all in and that's the unlock everything forever. And that's $74.99. And that's a one-time purchase. Even when Darkroom updates this app, you won't have to pay anything. So it really depends your budget. It really depends if you want to go all in. For the price of just over two years, you can do a one-time purchase and get this app forever. If you're really serious about editing on photos on the iPad, and I'm only suggesting that because that's what I did. I went all in and got it. There's also a iPhone app. You can also get it on the desktop. That one-time purchase and that monthly subscription covers all those apps. You don't have to pay for it in the desktop. You don't have to pay for it and subscribe on your phone and the iPad. That one purchase or that one subscription will do all three things. Darkroom is the app I use. I can't recommend it enough. I think it goes hand in hand with a Findy photo on the iPad so, so well. I do a lot of photo editing, a lot of touching up, a lot of, as you can see with my son, the old version of him and the younger version of him. I do all that work on the iPad, all my creative photos and posters on the iPad. I then export it in the Darkroom. And I love it. There's just something so much fun about it. I will talk about Lightroom maybe in another video and compare the two. And Lightroom is brilliant and it's powerful, but it's Darkroom is the app I go to time and time again. The next few videos here in my channel, I'm going to look into Darkroom a bit more. I'm going to dive deeper into it and show you some of the things or how I use it anyway. And if you have any questions about Darkroom, let me know in the comments below. I read and reply to each and every one of them. So that's it for this video. If you like this video, please give it a like. I'd appreciate that. Please subscribe. There's going to be more videos coming on Darkroom soon. And until the next time, thanks for watching. Hope you have a great day and I'll see you in the next video.